So this is where we are. We're going to prep the cylinder for uh, uh, to be sent to be resurfaced on this side. And to do that, we need to take all the parts off of it. We have the IV tech over here. Remember, this is upside down, so if you want to get your orientation, I'm going to have to take all this coolant intake parts off. I'm hoping that maybe you know, this is all one big piece, but this is what's most important. This number here, you need to know where this number is located, and this, these letters. This helps identify the cylinder head if you're going to try to get a new one or a rebuilt one. So, so mine is an RAA-5, so that number is going to be important, and it's on the opposite side of the cylinder head. So if you're ever looking for it, when I say opposite side, this is the side that's, that is, um, uh, uh, am I right? Is this, yeah, this is the downside. Yep, it's the downside. Why am I questioning myself? I feel like I'm confused. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does, okay, because of those little things. Okay, so this is the bottom side. Uh, over here, right, oops, we get a couple things out, so we got a couple, uh, guide pins here, so there's one of them. Pull that one out. There's another one over here. They usually kind of be, can be a little tricky to get out, but don't crush them, just kind of like wiggle them out. So if you're lucky, they'll come out easily. If not, they'll, you'll fight a little bit with them. Okay, let's go ahead and prep this. So we can get it resurfaced. We'll probably have to take those bolts off too. Yeah. Flipped it over. Let's get a little better access just to uh, things. Remember this? Yeah, we pull that out. Put that back. It was here and it was blocking my access to that nut right there. Um, this is a weird 12 millimeter. I don't really. It's so strange looking. Let's see, Let's see if we can get it off, shall we? Right when you need your uh, wrench, you can't find it. Oh, there it is. Okay. I think that's the last one holding it on, all the, all this whole bracket area. That was a bit nerve wracking, I gotta tell you. It really was. Yeah, that's a really weird nut slash something. There you go. All right, so there's a gasket in between here. Oh, this thing has seen better days.
I hope that the engine gasket kit I got has these. I've been checking them as I go along. So it should have it. If not, we'll figure it out. Alright, so we got to get this VTEC uh, cover and bracket out of the way. I think that these bolts go all the way through too. I think this thrill, I believe. This is, these are all 10 millimeters by the way. Can you see? Uh, it's a little dark. Gotcha. So that's a uh, pretty long one. Same, same size so far. three of these same size bingo so this is a main problem of failure because it gets dirty and clogged up this IV tech so we're gonna have to like unscrew this clean out the plunger clean out all this replace the o-ring okay great so we dropped off the uh, cylinder head and uh, we got to get this seal out, right? And uh, there's a tool for it. It's a, uh, it's for they call it a Baron race set, right? And uh, I'll put a link in the description for it. This is one way to do it, right? It comes with uh, this piece here. You want to find the uh, appropriate size. So seems like maybe. 55 millimeter might be the best. Yeah. And you just put it on top of here. If you don't have a 55 millimeter, a four, uh, 39 uh, Aries half inch drive 39 millimeter socket will work. You can push this out with. So you just kind of, this has a screw at the end. You just go like this, a little o ring there. Um, Push it on like that, all the way. Take this, screw this on like that. Get a hammer and hammer this out. That's one way to do it. We're gonna do that's that's one way to do it. We're gonna try to use the uh, the uh, dr drill. I want to use my uh, press, my hydraulic press, and stuff. Just make sure you have it all centered so it is touching. Just the actual seal, not the actual cover. All right. All right, so hopefully this is the right orientation. There's a 50% chance I get it right here. Yeah, it's moving. All right, and that's it. Okay, so that's pushed out. And this is what we have. Uh -huh. That's our seal. Great. So there's a spring that's usually in here. I took that out a while ago. And the uh, flap surface is going to be facing outside, away from the engine. Okay, when we install it. All right. So we're back at it again. All right. This time, this is where we are. This is an overview of the engine. Got the harness all the way off. We have ourselves the cylinder block. And uh, we need to get these pistons out because we need to check the ring gap. And also, we're going to uh, resurface the cylinder bore. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at right now. So we got a lot of 
we gotta figure out this issue right here. I'm gonna push the piston out from underneath to up top today. And uh, this right here is your subframe. Right, you got a bolt here, bolt here. In the front, all right, you got yourself some kind of hose here that's being held on here. Sorry. Um, this is our oil pan right here. So it's pretty accessible, like all the way right here. Everything is good until you get to right here. And that's the problem, the subframe, right? So it continues here. It's in the way. And uh, it's like those bolts, looks like those have to come out. That's around the lower controller arm. is a riveted nut it looks like so is that so something is attached on the top side and then we're gonna go over here at mirror is the same thing so I don't know if I need to take all of this off I just need to get clearance for this side over here and uh, just, so, just need to get it down enough so I can slide the oil pan over. We have a, a bracket right here. Looks like these are attached to the oil pan. So I should be able to just take those two off for the engine mount. Yeah. And then that'll give me the opportunity to slide this down. Now, over here, right? This is our transmission. We need to support this right here. So we're going to put a jack stand under here somewhere and hold that up. It's just to see what we can do to give ourselves some space. You know? I, actually, I don't even know. It's even possible we can even maybe jack the engine up. Because the, uh, the that bracket up top is not there anymore either. And see if that oil pan can slide down or if we can get access to those bolts. But we did take three bolts out from the side. I don't know if there's how many more are around that's easily accessible or not with this in the way. All right, let's just get at it. Let's see what we can do. All right, let's get this uh, torque converter cover off. So a whole bunch of 10 millimeter bolts. Uh -huh. Let's go here, break this one free. Looks like this. This. All right. Okay. So that's that's your torque converter. They're all the same size. There's three of them. All right. Get that out of the way. Oh, we're gonna get. Some 17 millimeter bolts off. Uh, I got my nano socket here, Astro Tools. It's pretty cool. Give you my, give you a link to it. Uh, well, that's pretty tight. That's pretty tight too. All right, we're gonna have to try. Uh, Something else. <sighs> this would be hard to get at if you didn't take the top engine out up and jack the bolt up, jack the engine out. <clears throat> there you go. I feel like I moved you. I have a feeling it might be easier to get these from the outside through the wheel well. 
let's try that. See those two here? That that one. Oops, sorry. Uh, okay, that one there. Sorry. That there and that one. Both of these we need to try to get off. So let's see if we can get them. So I think I got it. So I moved the jack over to the edge of the oil pan. I jacked it up a little bit more, you know, to the point it feels uncomfortable. But you shouldn't jack that far up. And it's considerably more accessible now. Just to kind of reach in here with my longer 3 8 wrench. All right, let's see if we can kind of break that free. Because I have more room now to swing. Yeah, there it is. Perfect. All right, there you go. That's how you do it. Pull. So a long time ago, I purchased this quarter inch, 17 millimeter socket, right? And uh, for weird situations like this, you can't, it's hard to find a 17 millimeter quarter inch drive socket. Look at how useful this is. Totally unbelievable how useful this scenario can be at times. So that's that. Uh, get the bottom one. Hmm. Might have to do that one by hand. Yeah. We're gonna have to get handsy. 17 millimeter wrench on there. That's it, that's out. And uh, it's the same size as the other one. Okay. Next we got six, four more to go. Two more in the bracket and two more on the uh, housing, the, the bushing that kind of slides into the uh, bracket. Two of the same size, and they are also the same size as the other four. Can't really show you easily, okay? Two more. Right, don't get your socket stuck. And see it happening. Alright. Alright, that's it. It's the last one. Also the same size. Slide this down now. Yep. That's out. Now we can get access to the two other bolts that were hidden behind it. And those two are behind that bracket. These are all 10 millimeter bolts. They kind of go across pattern because uh, we took those two out on the other side. So let's get, let's get these two out. You usually do it because you don't want to warp the pan. And it, that came off easily enough. Let's get this one here. those two. So you're gonna break them in a cross pattern so you go to the opposite side, loosen that one up, go to that side, loosen that one up, go to this one, go to this side here, loosen that up. Same thing the way that you loosen in the uh, cylinder head. Start from the outside and work your way in and like uh, just a little, just break it free 
all of them, then do a quarter turn all the way around until they're all free, and then you can, uh, then you'll be able to uh, get them all off in a way that doesn't compromise the actual uh, um, structure of the pan. Doesn't get warped. All right, all right. I'll bring you back. One. Right, this one's a little trickier to get at. The hardest one of all. So you see the jack stand. I moved it over a little bit to the oil pan, and right here. This is very difficult to get at. So I had to slide this under here like that and get that in there. These are all quarter inch drive sockets and a wrench. I'll put a link in the description, but that's the only way I can get in there to get that off. Okay, and then you know, just take the rest off. So there you have it. So we have 13 of these that we just pulled out. And we have another two that we pulled out earlier. So that's 15 all day for the oil pan. They're all the same. So, all right. So there's a couple price spots, right? Uh, uh, this is one of them right here. Kind of popped out all really loud, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. And there's another one over here, like right here. All right. There you go. Wow, that's pretty easy. Yeah, I think I think that's about it. Folks, I think that's about it. All right, let's go back in here. Oops, sorry. Hmm. I don't really want to damage the maiden surface of the soil pan here. All right, all right, you get the idea. All right, so we gotta drop this frame, subframe. Ah, I'm so uh, annoyed. Anyway, so we, this is what we have. We have the jack with a piece of wood on the transmission right there. And then back here, we got a fail safe, our jack stand underneath the transmission also. And we're gonna go ahead and pull that bolt there and that bolt there. They're both uh, 17 millimeters. It's a little dark. You can't see anything, can you? Oh, there you go. That's better. So let's get them off. I don't... Uh, like I said, they're 17 millimeters. Oh, already the oil pan's already moved. This thing's already down a whole lot. Okay. You know what, the subframe did drop down some. All right. They're both the same. Be careful, we got some stuff attached to the subframe we gotta get rid of. So here's a bracket for the uh, automatic transmission filter. Oops, sorry, right there. Yeah. It's a 10 millimeter. Let's break that. Frame. Move that out of the way. Screw that back in. So we got ourselves a 10 millimeter here. A little bracket here. Let's just try to pop that off. That looks like that came out. Probably broke like everything else. Let's see if we can get 10 millimeter. Okay, so that's free away from the subframe. So, oh, we got one more. We got to kind of pull off. Uh, 
probably don't have to do this, but we're gonna do it anyway because we don't want anything to happen. It just we lose the subframe and it rips right off and takes all this stuff with it. Okay, you see what I'm trying to do. You got it. So Honda gave you this nice accessibility hole right here to get to that 17 millimeter bolt right there. So you can uh, get the subframe out. All right, well, let's see what we can do here, shall we? Kind of short. To the rest beginning to happen right there at the top of that. Okay. You know what? You probably want to mark stuff. You know that? Just thinking about it. I'm looking at it a little bit more. And that there's a lot of room to kind of slide around and stuff. Let me let me just put a little paint mark right here around it. Just so we can get it lined up properly when we put it back. These are also 17 millimeters. That subframe absolutely dropped down a whole lot just now. This is what the bolts look like from the front of the car. Uh, these two uh, up front. That one was in the middle. These two are in the back. This is the one that's furthest in the back towards the tailpipe. That one's a little bit further in front. So that's the side. So I did the same on this side. We took uh, the shortest bolt out from here. <laughs> then we took uh, that bolt out. And then I'll loosen this one up and then the oil pan pretty much is like it's falling out. Let's go see if we can get that out right now. Come on, oil pan. Come on. Come on, oil pan. Yep, that's it. Wow. Alright, and that's how you do it. Still gotta pull the subframe out, but not all the bolts, not all the way either. Chain for the oil pump. It has some markings on it. See the see the dot right here, and then that is. Uh, I mean that mark here. There's an arrow here. It also points to the arrow on the back of the uh, case right here. See that arrow here, arrow right here. So those two arrows are lined up. That dot's right there. Hmm. All right, we're, uh, I think that's the position it has to be in. So let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, let's put some paint marks on there. Got some marks. So this is in between those two and up top here. That's yeah, right on that. So that's how we know where we are. All right. It took a little while. I figured it out how this is timed. I had to clean the uh, off. You see right here, there's an arrow right there. That arrow right here lines up with that dot right there. So that dot, that arrow, and then up here, this arrow here with the arrow here on the case. Okay, so that's how the timing works on this chain. All right, so there it is. I just jammed 
that drill bit right in between that space right there. Try to hold the tension off of that. And that's a 3 32nd inch drill bit. So it should to kind of get the chain off now. It's pretty loose. It's loose and maybe we have to take this side guide off, you know? Yeah, let's do that. Let's take those off. Take this here, screwdriver, jam it in between the sprocket. The gears, I mean. And then... There you go. That broke that free. So now... Oh, that's cool. A line. Oh, uh, that's nice. So you can line it up all the way through. Okay. So that should do it now, and then we can, uh... Take the, uh, hope you can see uh, what just happened. We need more ambient light. Okay, so with that, uh, that's this bolt here. That came out. And then, uh, we should be able to now, uh, Continue. Whoa! Light. Lights. Uh huh. Man, I hate this cheap headlamp. Bought it in a pinch. Uh, Alright. Alright, so that's back. should be able to, we need to detention this. So to detention it, we're going to push. We're gonna use this uh, 3 30 seconds bit right in here, like that. All right. Okay, we should be able to, there we go. See that? <laughs> that was a lot of fighting. That was a lot of fighting. And then we can get this off. There you go. All right. We're good. Finally, we did it. So that's the chain. Get a, get a visual. I'm going to show you a little something about the sprocket here. So, go with it. Uh, uh, head gasket. Head gasket. Head gasket? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'll bring out the hose and I'll be touching by the car. Okay. Let's go up there. That's the head gasket. This is the oil. Yeah. 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 So, it's not a bite. What's that? Trying to lock it in? No. No, no, no. I'm still disassembling and taking it apart. Oh, alright. Yeah, yeah. So, just making a YouTube video of it. Yeah, right? So this is going to be the top sprocket right here. And then uh, if you look back here, you see it has the uh, that little nipple. The little nipple lines up right there on the shaft. So you can't really mess this up. All right? So slide it in. And then there you go. Like that. Okay? It's locked in. All right, so we got to get some bolts off of here. And uh, we have four bolts. We have one here. Another one here. I'm wrong. I think it's two 14s. We got one 14 there, another 14 here, and this is going to be a 12. Sorry. Uh, that's a 12. And that's a 12 over there. And this is a 12. 12 right here. So. Two fourteens and three twelves. I think that's what's holding it. All right, let's get these uh, twelve millimeters off. I broke them free already, so they should just spin right off. That's one long one. Looks like that.
is much shorter. These are going to be 14 millimeters. They're both the same length. Oh, buddy. Get your oil pan. Some oil dropping. Alright, well, that's it. Well, that's that size. That's, uh, that's, that's as long as the, uh, the other long one. So, long one here, long one there, short one. Alright, so that's our prized possession, and uh, this is, these are the bolts that came out of it. So we had the two long 14s like here, uh, and then we had uh, two longs and two shorts, so it was, uh, we know one of these is going to be the long one. There's a long and a short on the same side. That's pretty easy to figure out. You can look and see that's shorter on that side. So the long one's going to go over there. And the short one's going to go over here. Alright, and that's your bolt management for this. Look at that. We are so there. Oh my god, this is great. Here's your uh, cylinder 2. Cylinder 3. And number one and four are going to be all the way up. Four will be under here. So yeah, we uh, we'll start off with these two. We'll uh, take the caps off. And they they say P A um, P P A dash zero eight. So that's your that's your orientation for when you uh, pull the cap off. You know you can read it. The P P A goes from uh, the rear of the vehicle. See right there to the front, and then uh, yeah, all right. We should be able to like unscrew these and then tap the pistons out from underneath. Yeah, all right, we're good to go. Nice. All right, so um, yeah, I gotta getting kind of hungry. Probably need to go eat lunch. Come back and get continue on this. We have to pull this off. All right, let's get these 10 millimeters off this cover. It's uh -huh. two. The same. You know, you, at this point, you probably think it's crazy what we're doing. Well, don't don't think so, because you know why? It's documented. You can see everything. I solved all the hard problems for you, so you're. It's easy to do, you know what I mean? Don't get intimidated. And you could have stopped at the head gasket, but you you don't want to stop there because, like I said, this uh, this is what's burning me in my Honda Civic when I did that uh, head gasket job. There's a video, a series of that, I'll link to it. But that, that I, I didn't put the piston rings on, and now my car is burning oil like I'm, like I'm using gas every week. It's insane. So I'm gonna have to pull that engine apart after this and do the same thing if I, which I plan to do to save the Honda. All right, good. There you go. So that's uh, that's this piece right here. And uh, we are, we're in. Okay, so now we need to start off with uh, number two and number three. Pull those off, push them out, measure the... Uh, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter if I can, as long as I can reach it, you know what I mean? But these are the easier ones, so we'll do that. Pull these bearing caps off, uh, push out the piston, measure the ring gap, see if we have to get oversized rings or not and now we're also gonna um, 
hone the cylinder too, so. All right, let's have at it, shall we? All right, let's get these uh, bearing caps off. We're gonna use, we're gonna do the cylinder number three first. Uh, that's this one here. Driver's side is over here, America. Passenger side. So we have two uh, 10 millimeter 12 point. They have to be 12 point to uh, to be removed. And uh, nothing else fits. Uh, I'm sorry, 12.10 uh, millimeters. Yeah, I said that. So let's see if we can break these free. Oh, these are nice and tight. same size. Okay, so now the cap here yeah, should just kind of come right off. There it is. I just want to see if I can tap the uh, piston up. I got this piece of wood here. I can touch the bottom of the piston skirt. So I can just tap it up. That'll probably fall out. Feels free, all right. Yeah, there it is. All right, there you go. That's our first one. Should, oh. All right, there you go. Knew that was there. Don't know why I didn't anticipate that falling. A little annoyed though because this does have markings on it. I'm trying to figure out the orientation. All right, I gotta regroup one second here. Uncharted territory. Lots of new stuff happening. So I really need one of you to push on this while I grab the piston. All right. So I'm gonna push this piece of wood up. No force needed. Just push it up with my hand. And then. It launched itself, didn't it? Holy cow. Alright. That is our prized possession. Heck yeah. We did it, ladies and gents. We did it. That's what we wanted. Okay. I got the ultrasonic cleaner fired up. We're gonna go ahead and clean all these one by one. And, uh, yeah. Let's go from there. I figured it out. Okay, so this is the bottom, right? You know how that sits. This is the top of the piston here. This has a groove also right here. See that? That groove is what matches with this groove. So it goes into the piston like this. so much better. See that now it's all flat. Alright, good. So let's talk about something else I noticed. You see the, uh, I didn't see it when it flew up, you know. Um, you did, but I didn't see it. But uh, this here, I don't know if you can see, there's a, uh, there's a, there's a arrow here and NI. So if you, if this was the car, and you're looking down at it, right? This, these arrows point towards when you install the pistons. They point towards the uh, passenger side America, okay? Where all the belts and everything, uh, where the time and chain is. So that's what you make sure you when you put these back. You put them back properly, okay? All right. 
next thing we gotta do is figure out the, the gap, the gaps on these. Let's see how, uh, let's see how off they are, you know what I mean? Alright, so we'll take them out and see what, see what we're doing, see what we have spec-wise. Okay, that's number two. And there's nothing special about this ring here. Yeah. We need to gather some more information. So we need to figure out now uh, the actual wear percentages. So let's uh, use the top ring first and see how far along that one is. So all right, so uh, we're gonna put the ring back in. I'm just gonna push it in, work, work it all the way in. Just use the piston to f get it flat. And then from here, right, we're going to measure the gap with a feeler gauge. Alright, so I got a nice shadowy dark shot for you to see here. Um, so that's the ring right there. The gap, we got to measure that gap. I don't even know what you can really see. It's, it's a little dark. We'll give it a try. So we'll probably probably start. What are we? What are we at? We're oh, we're not even using millimeters. We're, we're so hardcore. Let's see where we're at. This is a seven thousandths. Yeah, we definitely can get in there with seven thousandths. Yo, what's up? Good, good, good. We got nine thousandths. No, you do, man. I'm good. Uh, happy, thank you. Thank you. No, I'm good. I appreciate it. You know how we roll. Yeah. All right, always. Okay, here we go. We have eleven thousandths. Is that gonna work? Yeah, we're still in there at eleven thousandths. So, gap's a lot bigger than I thought. Let's go to thirteen thousandths. Thirteen thousandths of an inch. It's getting tight. Nope. 13 thousandths of an inch also fits. 14 thousandths. 14 thousandths fit. Fifteen thousandths. Uh, no, that's not good. Okay, so 13 thousandths is a. Uh, Looks like 13 thousandths is where we're at. And uh, let's double check that again. Yeah, we're at 13 thousandths. Okay. I probably need to push it down a little bit more and just get a feel for uh, what we're working with deeper down in the, in the bore. Uh, only because at the very top is gonna be considerably wider because there's a lot more compression that happens up here and expands the cylinder a lot more. So let's get a feel for what it's like in the middle and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we want to take a, before we, before we go jamming this down inside the uh, bore, I think I want to take this uh, bottom ring out. It's like two rings and a, it's right here. that ring. Let's look and see if it's special in any way. Yeah, the flat side's at the bottom and the groovy side is at the top. I 
this is the top one. This spacer in here. Let's use this now to push our uh, ring down some more and see what we get. Let's go to 18,000. <sighs> no. Okay, go back to 17. Let's go to 17. We never went to 17 yet. Okay, 17 fits. Alright, so it's uh, 17,000 in space. Alright, well, I gotta see if that's out of spec. Alright, so I just wanna like explain something to you before I take this last uh, piston out, right? Uh, the engine's pretty easy to, to just. What you want to do, you want to get this, these caps at the bottom, but you remember when we're top dead center on piston, cylinder number one, com compression stroke, one and four are all the way at the top, right? So what you have to do, you have to kind of turn the engine. See how easy that is? You just turn it. So I turned it forwards clockwise just to get it to like right here. And then I unscrew it. And then what I'll do, I'll turn it counterclockwise to uh, reinstall, but I'll clean one and two, get new rings. I'll gotta hone the cylinders too, so I'll be doing that, I'll show you that. And then uh, we'll just go in reverse, okay? All right, so let's take a little why we're gonna rehome these cylinders. Usually if there's no scoring marks or, the, you know, there's good cross hatching, there's no need to do it, but uh, let's take a look. Do you see right back there, a little dark spot right there? Do you see that? It's in every single one. And I believe that's where I was burning some oil. And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna rehome these. We'll start with cylinder number three. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll, uh, once I do it once, you'll see what we're doing. It's the same thing for all four, okay? So we'll start with, Cylinder number three and get a value for what uh, the ring gap is going to be now afterward uh, First thing I want to do is uh, clean the cylinder out So I'm going to do that with a little bit of brake cleaner Car cleaner car cleaner would also work and now we're gonna use our honing stone, right? Sorry, this is a uh, just honing stone. It's see how big it is. It's kind of uh, it's just at the uh, edge of like how much they recommend. All right, so it's completely dry. Uh, we need to uh, lubricate it. There's a couple things you can use to lubricate it. You can use a uh, honing oil. I'm gonna use WD-40. When you do this, right, you want to go in with it started. Get a nice. Keep it slow, but go up and down. All right, take your bets. We're back at the office, and uh, we got to figure out. <laughs> We're back at the office. We never left. Okay. Um, we need to figure out if this cylinder head, take your bets, is warped or not. Uh, so if the warpage is less than 0 0.05 millimeters, which is about uh, 0 0.002 inches or two uh, thousandths of an inch, then the cylinder head does not need to be resurfaced. If the warpage is greater than 0 0.05 millimeters or 0 0.002 inches, yeah, and about 0.2 millimeters, which is 0 
inches in addition to that you're gonna have to resurface it the maximum resurface and limit is uh, 0.2 millimeters so here's my uh, straight edge tool All right I'll put a link in the description below now we're gonna see if this it's gonna work or not if so you want to do this uh, diagonally and straight across because you're trying to see how it lays in all the surfaces right so go ahead and grab my feeler gauge <sighs> uh, you know I'm a little a little pessimistic because of how dark the oil is inside of this engine so it got pretty hot you know what I mean all right I, I can they could probably I'm gonna say we're gonna need to get this resurfaced Let's do it. All right, ready? Yep. <laughs> oh man, that sucks. It just goes right there. Yeah. And that's just on the diagonal. That's the like the most important one too. Let's go across the middle. No. Yes. 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 No. Okay. So at this point, we know that we have ourselves a warped cylinder head. And uh, we can either get a new to us cylinder head or we can actually get it machined. So we're going to have to, I'm going to go the get it machined route. I kind of knew that, but I just wanted to like verify. Oh, well, let's see how warped it is, shall we? Um, Go to point. Zero, zero, four inches. Yep. Goes through right there and right there. Okay, so we don't need to go any further. We got a warped head. We kind of knew that, right? All right, so we got to get this resurfaced. 